Today I'm going to talk to you about reliability control, which is a new chance for the operation of wind farms. My name is Tobias Meyer and I am a researcher at Fraunhofer Evers. If we look at a wind farm, which is composed of many different turbines that were all set up at the very same time, we get individual lifetimes for all of these. So for example, this turbine might last only 17 years, while it is designed for 20 years, whereas another turbine might last for up to 32 years, or any time in between. If we want to repower this wind farm some time in the future, when would we do that? Would we do that after 17 years, when the first turbine has failed? Or would we wait until all of these have failed and then repower the wind farm? Or would we even stick to the scheduled lifetime, which is 20 or 25 years? In my opinion, we have to look at the actual remaining fatigue life budget of the individual turbines. And we have to repower the wind farm as a complete system and all of the turbines should fail precisely at the repowering time. But how do we do that? Next is maintenance. If we look at maintenance, we have to take a lot of different aspects into account. The easiest way to do maintenance is to go purely reactive. If something fails, send out a maintenance team, fix it. If we want to do something a little more advanced, we use proactive maintenance, which means that after a certain time interval, maybe once a year, once every five years, we send out a maintenance team and they do the maintenance. But what time interval would we use? Would we use a two-year interval? Would we use three years? Would we even do this just once in the whole lifetime? It's beneficial at this stage to use condition-based maintenance, where we actually look at the system at hand, at each individual wind turbine, at each component, and determine how good is it, do we need to fix it in the very near future, and if so, we can do that just precisely before it fails. But that means, in the end, we are reacting on the damage that has accumulated in the individual component and we need to send out our maintenance team precisely such that they arrive there shortly before the failure occurs. That makes maintenance planning a lot harder than in proactive maintenance. And what if we get the information that our condition is critical right in the middle of monsoon season or when there is no ship available? In the end, this boils down to one question. What is the perfect time to actually do the maintenance that we need? And then we have to look at all the interconnections between the different turbines that we have. They are not only connected through the wind field, they are also connected through the grid, through the price of electricity, through our maintenance planning. And in a wind farm, there is a lot of individual interconnections directly from a turbine to turbine. In the end, what we want to do is we want to maximize our profit. But how do we do that? How do we operate a wind turbine to have maximum profit at minimum operating cost? In the end, this boils down to how do we squeeze out every last bit of energy that we could squeeze out of a turbine before we take it down or before it fails? Now let us take a look at the reliability of our wind farm that we've shown earlier. If we look at the individual lifetime, we see that at the beginning, when the turbines have been set up, all of them operate. After a certain time, the first one has failed. In our example, that was 17 years. And after about 32 years, all of them have failed. This gives us a reliability function, which is the probability that any turbine is functional. At the beginning, it's 100%. After an infinite amount of time, it's at 0% reliability. If we want to do proactive maintenance, we can look at the 95, for example, at the 95% reliability value. And this gives us the time at which we can do maintenance and have to accept that 5% of failures already have occurred. But this means that we waste a lot of possible lifetime of the individual turbines because we do our maintenance too early for the strong turbines. It would be advantageous to have a steeper function where we have a longer period of time where we have high reliability and the 95% reliability time frame is actually further out without changing anything in the actual system and without changing the actual mean time to failure. And if we are able to control our wind turbines such that we actually get this increase, we can also extend the lifetime very easily and get a changed 95% reliability time, which essentially just means that we move the reliability function outward. But how can we change our reliability function? We have to preserve weak systems. Weak systems are systems that are at a site that is exposed to stronger winds that has seen higher loads in the past. And we can increase the loads on a strong system. 
which might have seen less loads or which might have stronger components due to manufacturing variants. And that allows us to create individual operating strategies for each individual turbine and use up the fatigue damage budget that each individual turbine offers. If we look at the operation of a wind turbine, we can see that we always have to select the trade-off between the damage rate that we induce in the turbine and the power that we get out of the turbine. We can accept to have low power if we want a low damage rate but we also need to accept that we have a high damage rate if we want to have high power. Essentially that means in this point we would be overloading our turbine, whereas on the other end of the spectrum we would reduce loads and reduce power a lot. Usually this trade-off is selected during design of the turbine. So the engineers look at the data that they have and select any point out of these possible scenarios. They might not even know all of them but they do select a trade-off between the damage rate that they induce in the turbine by means of operation and controllers and the power that they get out of the turbine. We don't want a fixed trade-off. We want to be able to do this online during operation and not have a fixed value, but instead move around on this curve of possible trade-offs. We want to do this in a continuous way. We don't want one single value at a time and then one year later do a reconfiguration. We want to have a continuous adaptation over the whole lifetime. We do this by means of a controller, which would be running on a very top level of the turbine. On this level, we have the normal controllers that are embedded in each turbine. We have our aerodynamic system, we have the drivetrain, we have the generator, we have the grid connection, and we have our power pitch and yaw controllers that operate the turbine. These are running in real time on a very small time step and they are safety critical. To that we add a condition monitoring system which allows us to gain insights about the current status of the actual wind turbine. With the system condition we go into a reliability controller which then feeds this information back into a new control configuration and reconfigures our power pitch and yaw controllers. And here we have two control loops. The first one is on a very fast time scale operating in real time whereas the second one is only concerned with reliability and lifetime of the turbines. It is very much slower and allows us a continuous adaptation over years. The reliability controller that we propose is based on an optimization problem. We have the actual wind turbine and we have a system model. The system model can, for example, be based on the normal um, load computation models. We add to this a quantification of the objectives that we want to pursue, so maximum energy, for example or a low damage rate. If we have the same controller configuration in the beginning, the same parameters for the controllers, we assume that we get the same objective values out at the end. Then we use the system model and the quantification of the objective values and feed this into a multi-objective optimization. And with that, we find optimal trade-offs between the different objectives that we pursue. This gives us a set of optimal compromises. And the corresponding parameters for the controllers. During operation we can then quantify our objective values, feed this into a selection of the optimal compromises for the current situation and the current uh, status of the wind turbine, select our controller configuration accordingly and use this to adapt our wind turbine again. This process is based on an accurate system model and on a good quantification of the objectives that we pursue. And that is what's currently the main research topic in our field. If we have such a controller set up at the end, we can apply this to each individual wind turbine and obtain a reliability controlled wind turbine. But we could also do this on a top level for the complete wind farm, such that all of the turbines operate in unison and that the failure behavior is synchronized and that they act as one big system. For this, to be realized, we have a couple of puzzle pieces that we need to puzzle together. First off, we need load reducing controllers and we need control engineers that actually look at loads and at lifetime when they design a controller. We have that in the wind energy industry, it's the current state of the art. But then we also need to know what the current remaining useful lifetime is. And we do not only want to know if there is a fault, yes or no, we actually want to know what lifetime do we have remaining? What percentage did we use up already? 
then we need to compute what load reduction do we need. So we don't have one single controller, we have a set of controllers and we select from these. But for the selection process, we need to know what we want. Then, a couple of years in the future maybe, we need to be able to certify all of this. The certification process right now is based on a fixed time interval. So you usually get a 20 year period, your turbine is certified for this 20 year period. Then you might have a lifetime extension of another three years or another five years. And then you might be able to do this again. But in our case, we want to operate the wind turbine continuously adapted over the whole lifetime, such that in the end it meets the desired lifetime, but has produced maximum power. To do so, we cannot have an, a certification process that is based on our lifetime, because that is what we are adapting to. So we need a process that is based on the actual fatigue and the actual damage that was induced in the turbine, which means that we have to do a lot of work in the certification area and that we also need control, uh, condition monitoring. This means that we have to do more research in this area and that we need condition monitoring that is actually fit for a certification process. And in the end, we need to design our lifetime controller. But what's in this for us? If we have a turbine that is reliability controlled or a wind farm that is reliability controlled, what is the benefit? What is the business case here? First off, a given turbine has a given fatigue damage budget. And if you just put it up somewhere in the field and wait for the wind to blow, it has some lifetime. But in a reliability controlled turbine, we adapt to the wind and we adapt to the actual turbine which means that the fatigue damage budget that this individual turbine offers is actually used up completely. This allows us to use less material because we have better knowledge about the time to failure and we have lowered weights, smaller components, which make logistics a lot easier. On the other hand, we could use this to create a higher energy yield and get more energy out of our turbine. Secondly, we know our time to failure way better than we do this for a normal turbine. This allows us to do better maintenance planning. We could use less teams and they could work on a better schedule. And this would decrease the maintenance effort a lot. Combined, the left side of this diagram reduces the capital expenses up front when building a turbine. But the reduced maintenance effort reduces the operational expenses. Combined, we lower the capital expenses of the turbine, we increase the energy yield, and we lower the operational expenses. Altogether, this would lead to a significant lowering of the levelized cost of energy. With that, I am already at the end of my talk. I have been asking you a couple of questions about the reliability of wind turbines and what we actually want for it, the reliability of wind turbines. I've shown that if we were able to change the reliability function of turbines, we would have a huge benefit due to better maintenance planning, better operational planning. And I've shown reliability control as a means to adjust these reliability curves such that our turbines actually fail at more precisely known times with higher energy yield. And I've shown you the puzzle pieces that still need to be puzzled together and the individual aspects that we still need to work on. At Fraunhofer Ebus, we are currently working on these puzzle pieces. We are assembling them and we are setting up this reliability control for wind turbines and for wind farms. If you are interested in this as well, drop me an email at tobias.meyer at ebus.fraunhofer.de or look at our website. I would love to stay in touch with you. Thank you for listening.